How are you doing folks? Uh, this is Baron Samadhi for you. I am down here at the uh, Trafalgar Square and once again we've got the uh, uh, extinction, climate extinction uh, protesters once again. And uh, it is uh, uh, really amazing uh, that they have brought London to a standstill again. Uh, this time they got uh, two weeks for us. Um, this is the third day. Um, what's the day today? Um, it's about the 10th today. <laughs> check the day. Once this goes out, uh, different things will happen over the different days. Uh, today is Wednesday, the 9th of October. It's about um, it's about uh, three, four o'clock. You gotta get a timing right on that, you know. Um, it's it's quarter to four. So Wednesday the ninth, uh, quarter to four p.m. Not a.m. And uh, here we are with the. Uh, This time around, I don't think um, they're going to gain so much um, public support, uh, and they've chosen a real opportunist um, time to do this because uh, politically we are in a real terrible mess at the moment. Uh, we've got a prime minister with absolutely no power. Uh, the ministers in the House of Commons um, have taken away practically all of the powers um, that he has. He cannot call a general election. They want him to take a, uh, a letter to the um, EU um, asking for an extension. And if there is not an exit on the uh, 31st of October, uh, Halloween, Halloween night, um, we are really in unknown political and by the looks of it, social territory as well. Um, because there is a, a groundswell from the people who um, a groundswell from the people, the voting community, or the Brexit, Brexit us, who are upset, and it might even go to a point of some kind of social unrest or some protests of an anti-social nature. But we are in interesting times. Uh, these folks they're protesting, uh, they have three demands. Uh, one is, um, tell the truth. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, two is to set up some uh, local uh, council, local groups. Yeah, some for that. And three, they've given a date where uh, England's got to be carbon free. I'm not so much into that, and that's open to a lot of debate. Um, but to me, it's a distraction, and uh, the real problems people have day to day is that. Uh, year on year or day on day, prices rise. Your rent goes up, your utilities go up, uh, gas, electricity, water, they go up every year. Um, your council tax go up, goes up every year. Uh, transportation goes up every year. Your food goes up every year. Um, if you follow through the climate extinction uh, philosophy, uh, the cost of those things will actually maybe double, triple. It's because of the efficiency in um, 
modern uh, transportation, modern communication, uh, modern communication. We get these things at the prices that we have. Now, if things were all organically grown, it would take much longer, cost a lot more, and if the route that it needs to take to get to you is longer, then that in itself will be costed, you know. Um, but people are worried, they are fearful, and their, their fears and worry are pointed in the wrong direction by politicians and by people who are tuned in to their fears and phobias. And they don't give them the right answer or the first commandment of climate extinction is to tell the truth. Because the people actually um, who are giving them the answers are actually giving them, uh, actually wants them to follow them down a path which is debatable and may not be correct. But in this society in which we um, live in, London, UK, and I hear this uh, is a worldwide protest because I saw some stuff in New York and also up and down the country here in the UK as well. And it is, it is, I'm not gonna say it's a trendy thing, but it's, it tends to be a more uh, middle class, affluent, a lot of people actually protesting. Um, I mean, they too have their worries and phobias, um, like everybody else. But really, part of our our problem is actually the financial system. You may be very happy that your house grows in its it, its its wealth, its price. May be very happy that it grows in its wealth and price, but your council tax is based on that new wealth and 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 what it's it's costed at. So all your household bills would be based on that. Whether you paid for its current price or whether 10 or 20 years ago you bought it at one tenth of its value now, but now you got to pay. 10 times its value, and that is reflected in this false wealth. We now reach a stage where we actually eat it our foot to survive. What do I mean when I say that? There are people who can't live in central London. They can't afford the housing. It is so expensive because of this natural growth in the financial system. There are a tremendous amount of homeless people. Um, they are homeless for various reasons. And reasons like not being able to uh, keep up with the system. The amount you have to pay, how much you got to pay, when you got to pay it. Um, there is so much restrictions. Um, so they decide not to follow the system. They haven't got the money. Maybe they are part of the casualty of can't pay and will take it away. And here's what, it is enforced by the courts. And so we're caught up in this financial system which I believe you have short-term benefit, but eventually you'll end up eating your foot. And there are people who haven't got enough money uh, to pay for rent, even though they're in full-time employment, pay for rent, haven't got enough money to pay for food. Uh, there's a thing called fuel poverty. Uh, we are in such a stage now that it's not about food banks and just around the corner from here, Chicago Square, uh, Charing Cross, they have soup kitchens. I think it's literally every day around 6 o'clock, right? 
it's not even that. We have people actually eating out of the trash cans. Yes, actually eating out of the trash cans. So it's reached such a stage. Um, but this is all here. And the politicians that, um, that would stand in front of the media and talk about it would say to you, oh, it's um, these people have chosen. Or, you know, um, they have a choice. Um, you know, but a lot of exercises to, to help those people are temporary. And it is really about documenting those people. And then later on, they'll tell you about their um, the plight of the homeless. Uh, X amount has died. X amount has got rehousing. X amount have got back to the, the into the the system of things. But in general, I know people who were homeless, who did get places. But the cost of keeping up with the place was so much they ended up back out on the street again because prices rise we've got a thing called zero hour contract the amount of money you get from that you can't you cannot survive we reached a stage where uh, social security I call it now social insecurity and um, this new um, universal credit has has caused some people to literally jump off the roof, yes, commit suicide. Um, because it is so, this is the, the, the direction of um, society, this is the direction of government, this is the direction of business. We're literally in a two-tier system. It's really about the haves and the have-nots. And if you fall into um, whatever category, you know, we wish, I wish you the best, you know, and once you're in that have not category, it is really back to the old days of a poverty trap, and you just wouldn't be able to get out of it. The system is so um, designed and moving, not even, even if, even if you don't get caught out now, eventually you will get caught out because the rules change and a lot of people get caught out of the rules and not to mention being a person from the Caribbean not to mention the rule change behind the scene of the Windrush scandal everybody believed that they were okay until they found out that they changed the rules they were left person non grata status you know so even though you think you're okay don't believe that because they change the rules and whatever position you have in life or wealth or health you may find that change overnight Aaron Samadhi, Wednesday the 9th, uh, the extinction, climate extinction protest, I think they're going for two weeks, it'll be interesting to see how um, the public and the press and the politician um, take to this, whether they get support or they look at it as a distraction or an annoyance because people's day-to-day -day life uh, they have to fight day-to-day -day in order to survive or in order to keep up with the changes looks like they're getting ready for some entertainment now so I'm gonna sign off